Hi, my name is Doug, and this is another Emerald Hill Skylet. In this video, we're going to talk about building an equipment plate that's custom for your needs, for your scope. So please stick around. I just want to say, if you like this kind of content, please click subscribe and all that stuff about clicking the bell or the thumbs up, and that helps get the channel out so that other people find these videos and it doesn't cost you anything. So that's all. Uh, let's get to it. Well, I love the Rasa Telescope series. This is the 11, um, and they give you this dovetail bar on top where it's great for cable management to be able to route cables. There's another one under the bottom uh, as well. It also helps reduce the flexion for the, the, the OTA. But I thought, why don't I just try to put as many cables as I can that are custom made and hide them under this uh, dovetail bar and other places and custom cut them to the right length and then leave them on the scope. So that way, um, perhaps, uh, you know, we can arguably make a better arrangement when we hook things up on our scope, it'll go faster. So that's what I did. I'm just gonna show you briefly what I, what I did. For instance, here in front, I have three cables. Uh, this would be the, the USB 3 input from the primary camera, the power from the primary camera, and the do strap for the front. Uh, then <clears throat> there's also, of course, out front, the, the two, the USB and the power cable that plugs into the camera once it mounts on the front of the Rasa. And then way in the back underneath the scope are the uh, power cords for the uh, Celestron focus motor and the power distribution fan on the back of the Rasa, the power cable for the Celestron focus motor. And uh, I think that's it. So that's what's left on the scope. And so what I thought is, if I could make some kind of outrigger equipment plate that fastened on top, then uh, it would really just be a matter of plugging in a couple or three cables and it would be ready to roll. So that's what this video is about. And uh, let's next look at the mount. Give me five seconds to put this telescope down because I don't want to drop it and it's not worth it. take a look next at the mount. Now I have one of these, um, I have one of these um, Ioptron Sim 70G mounts and I'm not particularly happy with this. Um, it's the Sim 70G which means it's got the USB 3 hub built in and um, also the eye, um, the eye guider here, and also the eye polar uh, here. You know, I played with the eye guider a little bit, but for EAA, 20 second exposures, we really don't need guiding, but the hardware is great. And I got the guider in case I need it someday. If I do something longer, it's there. So I like that. But I really wanted the, the power built in so that the in-mount wiring would keep me from having to have any cables water falling off the back of the scope. Well, it's kind of a futile hope because at least with the, the SIM 70G that I have here, the, the way it's set up, is you run the USB 3 into the back of the right ascension axis here, and then you're supposed to run your own power supply into this plug here, which is a, a 5525 style. It's the, it's the, I don't have all those memorized, what the 2.5 millimeter barrel instead of 2.1. Why do they even do that? But it does help you keep your power cable straight, I guess. And the logic is 
put the amount of voltage you need for whatever accessory you're trying to power with this, let's call this the auxiliary power circuit. And it's not powered in the Ioptron SIM 70G. It's left uh, completely, supposedly independent. So if you have a, what, a Canon DSLR that uses a different kind of voltage other than 12 volts, you could put that you know, eight volt or whatever it is that's different. And then supposedly, whenever you see a 55, um, a 5525 plug, it's the 2.5 millimeter barrel, that would be, the, the 5525 barrel would be, I suppose, for your um, special voltage, right? Well, for some reason, on my SIM 70G, when you run power through that, um, and then you try to run your USB 3 camera, well, whether you're running your USB 3 camera through the mount at all, it doesn't work. So I finally realized that I was going to have to run the camera USB 3 cable out uh, for the primary camera, and I was going to have to run a separate power circuit. Now, if I do that, I've basically disabled anything that was special about the G on this mount. But it is a good mount otherwise. It just didn't need to buy the extra. Anyway, um, now these, if you're not running your primary camera USB 3 and you just have USB 2 stuff, like I suppose the, the focus motor, for instance, you can you can bring the Celestron focus motor out of here and bring it out of this USB 3 uh, port on the back of the right, ac right ascension axis. You got to bring that out anyway because that's where your laptop is going to control the mount for ASCOM. So you can pass the Celestron focus motor through the in mount wiring, I guess, and that's one less thing to worry about. Um, so this. 12 volt then is not used right now. Now, the mount has a separate, has its own 12 volt power supply here, and you still have to run that, and that's what powers the mount. Okay, so here in front, that means that these two power supplies are basically not used now in my case uh, because it didn't work. And I know I can try to get Ioptron to give me a new board or something, but I didn't want to have to wait on all that. It could take weeks to sort that out. So maybe long term that's a solution, but for right now I need something else. Uh, so I think that kind of tells you what I need. Basically I need a way to, to get power up to the scope, like for the primary camera that's dependable, and I also needed a way to bring the USB 3 power, the USB 3 uh, signal from that primary camera. So let me put this down on the floor and get this off my lap. Come on in. So what I'd like to say is that you can build a custom equipment plate like I did because it's just a matter of taking your time and, and experimenting and, and beginning to figure out what your needs are. So this is what I've come up with. This is the ASI 178 monochrome camera in front and I thought since I'm gonna have to put some kind of USB signal up here anyway I might as well put this camera here and that'll give me kind of an all-sky look when I'm you know moving the the telescope around that way I can sort of see and keep a connection with the sky since I do operate remotely from inside a, an office um, in the warm this way I can keep a connection with the sky and you know this lens they give you for free is like a hundred and I forget 150 millimeter 150 degree view of the sky anyway it's really cool so on this equipment plate I've got the uh, signal the data cable from that and it's just a nine inch USB cable going into one of the USB ports on a Pegasus Astro USB control hub. And then when I when I mount this on top the Rasa, I um, plug in the camera 
that's fastened to the scope, the, the USB, the primary camera, I plug it in here. So that's one cable I have to plug in. And then the power for the camera, I plug in here. And this is the Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Micro. Uh, and those are just, you know, double stick tape or Velcro, whatever you want to use, uh, to this equipment plate made by Los Mandi. And then they're held onto the scope with a Los Mandi uh, dovetail adapter bracket. I'll put the links for all these pieces into the description, uh, the show notes or whatever you want to call them underneath this video. So you'll have a one click link to see where I bought these and I don't get an affiliate um, benefit from any of this. This is the stuff I had to pay full price for and nobody gave me any of this for review. Um, so I know what you're going to ask. You're going to say, why did you buy the Pocket Power Box Micro separate from the Pegasus Astro USB control hub? And that's a very good question. So I, I want to answer that. But I just want to say, this thing is working great. You just clip this on a scope. It takes, you know, 10 seconds. And then you plug in three cables. The power from uh, your 12 volt power supply. You plug in the the uh, the the main USB out from the USB control hub. So it's just two cables that have to waterfall off the back. So I I can live with that. It's just two cables, and they're kind of lightweight. It's nothing that's going to shift the weight of the scope and throw things off on the balance of the weight. So I I can live with that for now, and it's it's working great. So you plug those two cables in there, plug these, and the thing goes on in like literally. 45 seconds. I'm done with this. Uh, I've got a do strap on the 178. I don't know. Do I need that? But it is sometimes I am working with a lot of do here on the outskirts of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, that cable just goes around in a loop and comes into the to the do heater input on the pocket power box micro. And then the third thing that I'm attaching on the scope is that do heater strap. Remember, I showed you a while ago on the Rasa, uh, just three cables to attach there. The do heater controller on the Pocket Power Box Micro is working great. I love that. And it let me get rid of the old do buster do controller that I had, which is kind of a, a manual looking box that didn't have a temperature sensor built in per se. You had to string the temperature sensor up the scope. It didn't have a relative humidity uh, sensor at all. So your adjustment as far as how much you needed to pulse the power band, it was all manual. And now that you're operating remotely, I wasn't out there to adjust it as the temperature changed through the night. So Pegasus Astro gives you this little um, temperature and humidity sensor. And again, that curls around and clips in here in the, like an RJ11, whatever you call that kind of plug. Now notice I didn't need the control for the focus motor built into a Pegasus Astro product. So that would have just been overkill for me. I've got a Celestron focus motor and I control it via, like when I'm focusing, I use like the Nina autofocus routine. And if I'm gonna make changes, then I just run the Nina autofocus routine again. And I don't ever need to control that manually through something Pegasus Astro would give me. So. I didn't need to buy like the ultimate, the Pegasus Powerbox Ultimate, which is like over $600. Uh, and these work fine for me. And I know people might ask, well, why two boxes? You know, I'll show you in a second how I made that decision. But I like this. It's pretty lightweight and it, uh, it holds itself well. And because I fasten it here at the front of that, that bar, it also cantilevers it. Is that the right word? Cantilever? Doesn't seem right. Uh, it cants it out like an outrigger out in front of the Rasa. And that gets it a little bit farther in front of the dew shield. So it doesn't put the dew shield as much in the picture <clears throat> of the 178's all sky view as you would think. And you can, if you have time and you can stand it, watch one of my recent videos that's showing you the all sky view of this 178 and you'll see that dew shield is not at all uh, too big. In fact, 
it's exactly the right amount so you feel like you're still riding on the scope. You, you can anchor in your mind's eye, you can anchor that you're on the scope. So I like that part. Uh, this equipment plate that Los Mandi makes, this is very beefy. And so there's no warpage or it doesn't feel like it's gonna give any. And this little mounting deal, um, I'll add that to the equipment, to the list of this in the description as well. So you can see it really works well, ratchets down pretty hard, and you can adjust the 178 and the angle you want. I don't have it angled exactly with the scope. I've got it a little bit up, but um, it does let you see a lot of the sky and you can see where the moon is and how many clouds there are. And I like being able to keep in touch with the sky. So that's working well. And I love the fact that these cords are as short as they are. I don't think it would be good to have a bunch of, you know, like the, the do, uh, the, the cable running to the do strap. Uh, I, I did cut those and re-solder them into cables. Uh, and I know that's a little bit unsettling to have to mess up your do strap you just bought. But it really is important, I think, to get rid of those coils of things on equipment plates like this. So they're not just, uh, uh, you know, bundles and bundles of coiled up cables. Whether that's your power cable or your USB cable or your do uh, strap, power supply. I think it's important to get rid of those. So let's see. I also wondered how to send the power. And so I temporarily for now just made this little power box. I just put it in one of these little relatively inexpensive Lycus um, containers. I mean, they're like $40. They're not much, but they are, they are, they remind you of the nice uh, you know, cases like this that are $200 or whatever. They remind you of that. And I put these little, uh, what do they call them? Cable glands, I think, in the side to pass the cables through. And that way I can go ahead and close the box because we do operate at uh, some really low temperatures here sometimes. Like the other night it was 7 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, like whatever that is, 11 or whatever below centigrade, zero. Uh, and I do now have these uh, power Anderson power pole connectors uh, with the Pegasus, the Anderson power pole tool to crimp those shut, and they're working out great. Uh, I have that, you know, fastened to a plexiglass, um, just a plate that this rides on and sits inside inside this box. This is a a Meanwell. 12 volt power supply. I'll put the links to all this in the description. And it's nice. It'll do, I forget, something like 30 amps or whatever uh, if you needed to. So that's putting enough amperage into the, the power. And what I did, I know it's a splurge. Okay, so forgive me for this. This is the splurge. Everything else has been really affordable. Uh, I did get one of these Ridge Runner. Um, power distribution boxes, but I just liked the fact that these Anderson power pole plugs would click in there, you know. So then my snake from from this distribution box then, uh, remember it, it goes up on top the scope and then it fastens along that dovetail bar with three nice little Velcro straps you probably saw on the OTA. There are only two cables to have to plug in. One is the the input from the power. I did label this one because that's probably not one you want to plug into the output since it's powered with 12 volts. So I do have it labeled. It is the 2.1 millimeter uh, connector and I know that Pegasus Astro puts that on there because they want to help you standardize your connectors. But here I was complaining about those a while ago. But that does need to be labeled so you don't put that in to one of the outputs I, I suppose, I ma imagine. And then this is your uh, USB 3 out of the USB control hub. Now on the other end of this box, then you've got, again, just two things. This clicks into the, to the rig runner, and this is your 12 volt power out. So I just have that set so it'll uh, click here. And you can only plug these things in one way. I mean, the, that's the great part about these Anderson power pole. You guys have been using those forever. 
you know those will only plug in one way and it's set so that you can uh, put a retention thing there if you want clip clip in the retention clip and and hold them so that way it doesn't you know come unclipped through the night and I like that stuff you know because I know these cigarette lighter adapters that we all started using when we started out and I did also they're not uh, very you know dependable uh, because they don't have a, a way to retain them so you just plug that in and then this thing lights up and you know it it shows you your exact number of volts and amps out it gives you several um, circuits that you can use but I like this because I see the exact number of volts that the mean well power supply which is adjustable very granularly adjustable you can dial this up to like 13.9 volts that's what I have mine set out right now and that way the power supply is getting plenty of power so it can always stay above 12 that's the idea and this uh, rig runner is set so that once it gets above 14.5 volts I think it is it just clamps off the power so that way you don't fry anything on your scope ever and then each of these circuits is also protected so that uh, you can and you can adjust those in the software uh, and set them on what you want them to be I'm only using like two amps in this whole setup it's really really low it's like two do straps and and a power adapter for a primary camera it's not very much stuff and I can measure that amperage carefully up on the scope as well because the power box micro has a software applet that you can look at on your laptop to let you see the exact power that you're presenting to each uh, particular uh, accessory and it also shows you the overall voltage that it's receiving from your power supply so I'm checking it in two places so I really like that part this is a bit of a splurge I know but I uh, I love the rest otherwise I put this spiral winding around these two cables but honestly they're so lightweight this is not a big deal it's not like the big wad of umbilical cord we used to have when we did this before so I've shown you all that uh, now when you get the Pegasus power box in the power box micro and the um, Pegasus Astro USB control hub you'll get them in nice boxes like these but I didn't do an unboxing video why do we do that why do why are we interested in watching somebody else unbox something? I'm just going to tell you, they come in nice boxes with lots of accessories. For example, they give you all of the, the 12 volt cables you need with those two point whatever adapters on them. They give you all those that you need. And somebody else I saw on YouTube was complaining, why do they give you so many? I don't complain that they give us these. They're trying to help an amateur who didn't have an existing cable so if he buys it and he, he gets it the same day he can go out and observe that night I, I know that somebody could argue well these are not gonna be the right length oh my goodness give me a break I just like it that they're that they're providing these and honestly the link is not the length is not too bad um, these are not those long you know 10 foot cables they're just I don't know what that is what is that three and a half feet or something 40 inches or whatever so they're really giving you a pretty nice cable to use and again that's to go from your Pegasus Astro too many P words here Pegasus Astro pocket power box micro uh, to your accessory you know and then what I had to buy is um, these um, what would you call this uh, like a pigtail that has I bought the pigtail with the barrel adapter already on because that's the easiest for me to work with and that way I can just uh, solder these to the length of cable that I want so it's pretty easy to take one of those and snip it at the length you want and then put this on the other end and that way you you're you're using a very you know uh, definable length that's exactly what you need to be everything's dropping through the to the floor here okay now I just want to show you what some of these are like then when we look on the um, here's the USB control hub that Pegasus Astro makes and this is a thing I fell in love with first if I'm gonna have to have something to replace 
the USB hub that was supposed to have been built into the mount, then this really caught my eye. It, it gives you um, USB 3, super speed, low power, switchable uh, ports that you can software turn off and on, and it gives you six of them. Now, look with me in a minute. Are there any Pegasus Astro products that give you six USB 3 ports that are software switchable? I, I don't know if they have another thing like this. The other thing I really liked is this is a beautiful piece of hardware. It comes in this anodized aluminum enclosure box that's just beautiful. Um, these are switched on and off, and you don't have to then walk out to the scope and unplug the camera. You can now reset something or unplug whatever the device is you're trying to reset. You can reset it from your laptop now. Um, I loved the temperature support that they give you. This is minus 40 centigrade to plus 85 centigrade. Do the conversions on those. This is all of the temperature support you will ever need. Um, I mean, this thing will operate when it's completely covered with ice, so to speak. And you don't have to worry about, um, I mean, you wouldn't want to go dump it in the swimming pool. You know, it's not waterproof, but it is uh, designed, it's designed from the ground up to be able to uh, stand by itself out there on top of your scope in the frost. And I love that part about it. Uh, this is a, a screenshot of the software. It looks exactly the same when I bring it up on my laptop. Uh, it lets you completely control and, you know, it, for, for the money, you know, it's a powered hub that presents power at these USB ports uh, with incredible temperature range. Uh, I have tried several USB hubs and I've gotten the plastic ones and yeah, I know you can buy the star whatever ones for less money than this, but but this was so cool. <laughs> it's so it's so tiny and it looks so good with a pocket power box micro and it's got the great software. Now I'm scratching my head. Does the star one that everybody uses, does that give you software support? I don't know if it does. This tells me exactly what device is connected to, to which port, all within the, the actual USB software as well. It shows you the amount of voltage that you're, that you're running to each port. Um, you can set it up once, and if you don't use a laptop regularly, it'll remember the settings for the next time when you just plug it in and run. So I really like this and I thought, okay, I kind of want to use this box, but I did go and compare it to other things. For instance, I compared it to the, well, let me, let me first of all show you. I, I wondered, Rats, I just closed something. I think I wanted to show you. Um, I, I wondered if I should get this ultimate thing because ultimate sounds so cool but first it's six hundred twenty dollars and that's a lot of money i know what i closed i closed the pegasus astro page which would have told us about the ultimate pegasus astro page um the ultimate it just sounds like this would be the one right it's the version two but look, in the first place, um, it only gives you four USB 3 ports, not six. And I just thought, well, why am I paying $600 for something that gives me two fewer USB 3? Now, I know there are two that are USB 2, and I know a lot of the gear is going to be like that. But I thought, I'm paying $200. No, wait. $400 more for this device. Um, now, you're going to argue, well, yeah, but it gives you the, the power as well. So I went to look at this, not that. I went to look at, who knows what I went to look at. I've lost all my, <laughs> well, 
Well, I, I looked at this also, the pocket power box, and you know, it doesn't give you any USB, so I kind of ruled it out, and it doesn't give you, let's see, so, so I, it kind of meant that I wasn't gonna buy this as my all-in-one um, supply, you know, because it didn't have everything I needed anyway, so I was gonna have to get something anyway, so I found this pocket power box micro. This gives you your four 12 volt outputs, and I that's more than I needed. And it also gives you the software, and it gave me the do eaters, which let me get rid of that old do buster. It's so tiny, and it mounts right on top of the USB control hub as well. So I thought, you know, this is what I would get. And if you add up the cost of this box, which is around 200, and the cost of the USB control hub, which is around 200, you're at 400, which is $200 less than the Ultimate. Now, the other thing the Ultimate has, if you need it, is a focus motor controller, but I already told you I don't need that because I'm using Nina to autofocus. And then I go until the temperature changes and I don't control it anymore. So I saved $200 by buying these two boxes. Now, you might think, well, what about the uh, Pocket Power Box Advance? And I know you might make a good case there because this does have a USB 3 hub but it only gives you two USB 3 ports and then the other two are USB 2 ports now on their website there's a typo so don't get confused by it it says two USB 3 and two USB 3 well obviously that's a mistake when you look up higher here in the opening it tells you right off the bat that it gives you two USB 2 plugs and two USB 3. So I thought again, why am I paying $330 or whatever this is? I'm paying $330 and I'm getting fewer of the newest kind of USB hub there is. And I thought, let me future proof myself and go ahead and get the USB 3 uh, and six of them too. This is just four USB ports. So for me, for just just a little bit of dollars more, four hundred dollars instead of three forty or whatever this costs, I'm getting the dew heater still, the six USB three point one, and the four power thing. So that's why I didn't get the um, advanced. But you'll have to decide which one you want. I bought the Pocket Power Box. By the way, here's the three hundred thirty dollars for the advanced. I bought bought the pocket power box from um, Agena, I think it was. But wherever you can find it, um, I'm sure I'm sure you'll do fine wherever you can find it. So let me see what else I'm going to show you. So you've seen the control hub. Uh, you can see there. This is where I was showing you that the ultimate will set you back six twenty. Um, Let's see, I've shown you the PowerBox Micro. This is the Dove plate, and I'll put that in the uh, details. This is the this is where I was shopping for the uh, the actual equipment plate itself, and I'll put that in the, the details. This is the 178 camera that has this lens built in, and that, that lens does come with it, or that'll also spin out, and you can use it with your... Um, you with your guide scope someday if you want. Um, and they run about uh, $299 for that uh, all sky camera. These are those pigtails that I showed you, uh, and I'll put the link to order those. This is the rig runner. I know, I know, I know. Forget it. I splurged on that. Uh, this is that Meanwell 12 volt, uh, it's 29 amp actually, 30 amp roughly uh, power supply. This is working great. And you can adjust it with this little screw um, screw thing here, and it's very, very granular. You can put it at whatever volts you want. So I really am loving that. Um, this is what I've ordered next to replace my um, little power box I made. And there are like three or four things are going to go in this and sit at the base of the tripod, and then tripe here, I guess they call it, and then. When I get the observatory done, Lord willing, second week of March, 
it'll set at the base of the pier. Uh, all that stuff will go in here. It'll be like a rack. And I'm looking forward to that. It'll have this in it. It'll have the power supply in it. It'll have two or three other things that I'm working on. Uh, and it'll all sit inside that rack. So I'm looking forward to that. That's another splurge, isn't it? Uh, and then, oh, this is where I was looking at the ultimate power box, which for me wasn't very ultimate. So uh, bringing it back home again, what would your equipment plate need to look like? I would say take a piece of paper and make a rough schematic diagram of what are the things you have. For me, I had primary camera on the front of the Rasa, primary camera power, secondary camera, which for me I'm using as an all, all sky camera. For you, it might be a guide, a guide camera. Um, figure out, you know, whether you need power for that. Probably don't. Then I needed, um, let's see, power for, is that it? Oh, the do strap, the two power cables for the two do straps. And, um, and then I needed, on the back of the scope, I had the Celestron focus motor and the Celestron power fan that, circulates air through the rasa to equalize the temperature. I'm running both of those power cords into the mount because remember they're they're powered. I'm using the mount's own power supply and that's working great uh, in terms of the amperage there. It's not too much for the mount. And then the uh, Celestron focus motor USB cable is coming into the to the mount in back of the saddle. And you draw yours out what you need and then uh, figure out, you'll also need, remember if you do like I do and buy this, you'll need to have this power box powering your USB control hub and then a jumper from the USB control hub coming back in to uh, talk to, or I mean from the, from the power supply coming into the control hub so you can use that app to see your voltage and your amperage uh, passing through the control hub. So draw that all out. Um, and after you make your drawing, figure out you know how many USB ports you need and where you need them. Will you need to have a, a power supply cable like I made, uh, water falling off the back of the scope, and I made mine to fit so that I have exactly the right amount needed no matter what the Rasa does on that Ioptron mount. There's plenty of, you know, space there. Um, have fun with this and, you know, it's sort of like making a science fair project. I mean, this was just fun for me to build this. It's like, it's almost like you're building a robot or something, you know, and, and uh, it works great. Watch a couple of the recent uh, uh, the live streams, uh, the, the recordings on the YouTube channel, Emerald Hill Skies. While you're there, please subscribe. Uh, you can also go to emeraldhillskies.com and watch them there, by the way, now. Watch a couple of the recent, and you'll see this is performing well. So I'm just one fellow struggler telling, I'm one, uh, you know, guy looking for, one beggar looking for food, telling another beggar where to find bread. I don't get paid anything for this. Nothing you buy gets me any affiliate dollars. There's no desire to make money off of you. Uh, instead, I'm just saying this is working for me and I hope it works for you. Thanks for watching this. I know, uh, you know, you have a lot of things to do with your time. It meant a lot that you spent this time. And I hope that somehow it might inspire you to try this on your own if it'll help you. God bless. Have a great night. And boy, get out there in the cold and let's have fun. And hopefully you can operate remotely. Thanks a lot. Good night.